Chloe, I know you have baggage, but this is ridiculous. Recently, we have heard about this show that The Weeknd is working on. Mostly people were talking about it because The Weeknd is involved. Sam Levinson was supposed to produce with Amy Simmons being the director. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. So this show is called The Idol. Lily Rose Depp is the lead of the show, so obviously everyone heard of it. Recently, as recent as yesterday, for me at least yesterday, Rolling Stone has released an article, an expose of sorts, on the behind the scenes of this production. So as soon as I heard about the article, as soon as I read it, first and foremost, yeah, I was kind of pissed about what happened there. The production basically got completely scrapped when there was only one episode left to film, mostly because Abel, the weekend decided that the show was too much from a female perspective and he didn't want that so he <laughs> fired the director to have sam levinson step in instead sam you know i have issues with him most of those issues are not even with the fact that he likes to have a lot of explicit scenes in his productions as much as it is with his writing and how a lot of the writing is very weak it seems like he thinks that because he uses situations and scenarios that are extreme or that touch on topics that are hard to talk about because they are controversial he thinks that ultimately people are going to think that he's a good writer without having to actually actually have any point to whatever he's showing, you know? I think that a lot of people do that when they don't want to talk about their work. They just kind of hide behind the difficult subject matters of those works. It's a lot easier to pretend to be a good artist if you say, well, I'm talking about this difficult thing, this huge issue that you guys don't really like talking about because it's sad or depressing or difficult to discuss in general so it makes me an artist because i'm even talking about it which is a little strange because after this many years thousands of years of art history you would think that he'd have more perspective considering that he was born into so much privilege that he would have time he would have resources to know better to learn about art his writing style seems to be a little bit weak uh, for someone who wants to explore themes that are so heavy and so personal to so many people, right? So there's this quote that kind of describes what happened with this production and the reason why I even wanted to make this video is because after I read it and after I saw people commenting about it on Twitter condemning the whole thing, I immediately felt another wave coming of people being pissed at Gen Z for being puritanical or being puritines, which is like a new term that people coin. I think that it's very interesting that people are kind of up in arms about the new generation being puritanical when they are calling for less sex scenes in their media, right? It's a very interesting conversation and we'll get back to it right after I explain to you what actually happened with the production by reading you this quote. A major concern among the crew, according to four production sources, was Levinson chipping away at the show's original messaging, creating a distorted and jarring story that lost its overall impact. I don't know if this is how you pronounce it, but I'm gonna go with Tasfe. Um, is credited as co-creator and writer, three crew members with knowledge of the situation claim he barely touched a script, during the reshoots. It was a show about a woman who was finding herself sexually turned into a show about a man who gets to abuse this woman and she loves it. So this is basically the main issue that everyone has with this show is that it was completely scrapped. All the people who signed up for it, especially people who are, you know, the actors and whatnot, have been kind of duped into participating in the show that completely changed. At various points, Levinson's scripts contained disturbing sexual and physically violent scenes between Depp and Tesfaye's characters, three sources familiar with the matter claim. In one draft episode, this is... It was like, what is this? What am I reading here? One of the sources says, it was like sexual torture. So also, Rolling Stone underlined that um, Samit's version of the idol also was going to contain sex scenes and nudity. Sources claim Levinson dramatically ramped up the explicit content, a move that is quickly becoming his calling card. Most of all, this whole situation, of course, brought out a lot of comments online on Twitter of people voicing their opinions, saying that the fact that it was a story about exploitation of a young woman and it was supposed to be commenting on it and it became the thing that it was commenting on is insane obviously there was some kids 
online that were saying that、um, you know they heard a few people bring up the question of why is there so much nudity or why are there so many sex scenes in our media. Obviously, there was backlash. To those comments from mostly older people, but some younger people too, who were saying, you know, why are you being so puritanical? There's nothing wrong with the sex scene and all of that. I think that this is an important conversation to have, and I think that it is largely misunderstood. The day I saw a tweet about someone being mad that people are even calling Sam Levinson out with Euphoria, I watched Euphoria. Because、uh, my roommate at the time wanted to watch it, and we watched it together, and、um, I was quite underwhelmed by the entirety of the show. I was expecting a lot more substance, because、um, I was not offended by the nudity or by the explicit nature of the show.、Um, I wouldn't say that they were glamorizing drug use per se, especially with Rue. I do think that they did glamorize Molly, that kind of stuff. I think that they did glamorize that with all the beautiful shots. Of what you see when you're high, or whatever the fuck, that was definitely, you know, iffy. But overall, I don't think that the drug part was really that much of a glorification of it or anything like that. However, I do think that the show was quite empty. It was not interesting in any way. I was quite bored watching it. Very weak script、um, with a lot of、um, flowery camera work, which is, you know, I love. A good visual, obviously. Like this is <laughs> my entire channel is just like me talking about visuals and concepts and whatever, and like my degrees about that. Obviously, I care about visuals, but there's no point in making it into a show. You could have just made it into a music video, honestly. Like most of the beautiful shots in Euphoria could have just been a music video or part of a music video, and、um, there's no reason for it to be like a whole blown out story, right? There are a few things that I think that are interesting. So, for example, with the first. Of the two specials of Euphoria, where Rue is talking to her like mentor or whatever, and they're talking about addiction,、uh, there was a few interesting topics and a few interesting. Takes on addiction. I'm gonna say that it doesn't actually lead anywhere. It kind of presents a very messy situation, I guess. And two people who are struggling with something, who are talking about God, addiction, personal responsibility, relationships with others, redemption, and possibility of it, and all of that kind of stuff. However, I would say that any other show, even a show that did not really have nudity, like BoJack Horseman, had a lot more to say about this topic than. And、Euphoria did, even though Euphoria is with real people and not fucking animals. Like half animals have people or whatever, and it's not as ridiculous. It's a lot more empty than BoJack Horseman is, and BoJack Horseman is quite dark. If you if you've seen it, it's、um, touching on a lot of difficult topics, and a lot of people miss. Interpret the show too, especially like you know those bros that think that this is some kind of redemption story. Or basically, there's some people who definitely like Bojack too much. But regardless of that, Euphoria was boring. A lot of characters that did not have any substance. A lot of characters that did not have motivations. A lot of characters that. Were struggling from this aimless string of situations that were just happening to them. Some of the most glaring examples of that is Cassie in second season, Cat too. With Cat, some of the scenes, like for example, the scene where she is fantasizing about that dude who fucked. Whatever that whole fantasy scene does not really expand on anything. Regardless, yeah, there's like dick swinging and guns swinging, but I'm bored. Like <laughs> you're not. Telling anything new, and I'm just I'm I'm just telling you how it is. It is boring, and even though the actors can act and the camera work is camera working, it's just not interesting. A lot of people were concerned about the. Sex scenes. A lot of people were confused about as to why there's so much nudity, right? Because it's quite pointless in that show. There's a lot of moments that definitely did not need to be there. But most of all, I think that many people misunderstand the new generation and the younger people, kids who are watching these shows right now. So first and foremost, I think that if we're going to be making very explicit shows like this, I think that we need to move on from high school and maybe set it in. University first and foremost because they're still naive and innocent. If you wanted to explore the first encounters people have 
when it comes to love, sexual experiences and all of that. You can still have those things, but have those characters not be underage. It's really weird to have characters who are underage played by older actors, which does eliminate the ickiness factor of them being like underage and on screen and whatever, right? But it does still feel uncomfortable because of how people are so adamant about exploring these topics, like for example, topics of addiction or topics of um, sex and its impact while focusing on kids. This is These are topics that could be discussed with people who are at the very least legal. Obviously, there are kids who are struggling with these issues, but a show that's so unserious as euphoria is is not a place to talk about it especially you can't do it responsibly and you can't do it in a way that doesn't make you feel like you're taking advantage of kids the show is just kind of unnecessarily doing a lot of things and at the very end it doesn't even address anything in a way that would be interesting or truthful i think that there is some kind of truth that a lot of artists are chasing when they're talking about or they're creating art that's very explicit. I think that oftentimes when we talk about explicit art, the explicitness of it all is either part of like cultural kind of situation where nudity, for example, is not really considered to be inherently sexual or sex is not considered to be so separate from everything else like it is in Western societies, you know? Um, there's diff different types of approaches to it, obviously. but. We're talking about a show that does not actually dive into anything. Each interaction between the characters is as empty as it gets. Obviously, there are a lot of really difficult topics being discussed in the show, but those discussions are basically void because all you get is the visuals of the violence. You don't actually get to have any sort of comprehension of what is going on, it's kind of similar to 13 Reasons Why, in a way that the first season when I watched 13 Reasons Why, it's obviously a hard watch, but at the same time, I remember when I finished it, I was like, yeah, this is not great, but I was kind of defending it to people being like, I think that they're just finding their footing, I think that they just went a little bit too far or did not say what they wanted to say, but they are going there, you know, they're getting there. I thought that they were gonna get better and they just got so much worse with each fucking season because the intention was not great from the very beginning. It was just more about the shock value rather than anything else, you know? It's kind of like artists who, who are kind of like Vito Aconci. I absolutely hate this guy. His art <laughs> is really fucking stupid, honestly. In some way, when I say that I don't like his art, people assume that it's because of, uh, you know, some kind of puritanical views, you know? Because he had um, artworks where he was, for example, jacking off under this ramp that was installed in a gallery, right? And, um, of course, this is like a natural assumption, like I understand why people would assume that, but the act of doesn't really offend me and also you go to a fine art school or you study art history and you quickly start being like way too jaded to be shocked by anything right and that's why i'm telling you that the reason why i dislike vito Conchi or why i dislike sam levinson's work is because it's stupid it's void of actual meaning or point and even when they try to describe it or explain it it seems so trivial and so far removed from their human experience and more about their need to inflict experiences on others that I just don't care to listen to whatever they have to say. Vito Conchi jacking off under a ramp in a gallery is not an artwork that can be explained to me in a way that would make it okay because a lot of the people who walked in, not a lot of them, all of them, all of the people who were in the audience or who were gallery patrons did not consent to this whole situation, right? And it seems quite strange to, for example, get upset at someone were not wanting to be in that situation. So with Sam Levinson, first of all, like he fucking changed everything about the show. He removed the core of it and replaced it with more explicit stuff because he just wants to have a reaction, obviously. He wants to have good ratings and ratings come from shock value. When it comes to puritanical views and the new generation. I really want to dive into it and explain to you why I think that people are 
largely misunderstanding where this shit is coming from in terms of um, teens being more maybe not uncomfortable but calling out a lot of the sex scenes and a lot of the representation that we have on tv and in movies we're talking about a generation that is very exposed to the internet and to unwanted exposure to a bunch of shit, right? Second of all, we are talking about a generation that is watching contemporary movies and contemporary shows that are marketed to them, right? And to understand where this is coming from, we have to look at the media that we are presenting to them, that we are making, right? Most of the media that we have today is void of sensuality, is void of of chemistry. I don't know wh when was the last time you watched a romantic movie and you gave a fuck. <laughs> Genuinely. This is the type of sex scenes that we provide our current generation, okay? This is a show that is primarily for teens, let's be real, because a lot of adults who are in their 20s, 30s, they might watch it and they, they'll forget about it. This is something that will affect mid to late teen demographic the most, right? And it will affect them the most because these characters are also portrayed to be their age, okay? They're 16, 17 in this show, for God's sake. A lot of kids nowadays, they are not really puritanical, but they're busy. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you that most people are studying really hard because they don't want to be on the streets and even then they still might end up on the streets because of our economy so people are stressed, okay? A lot of people are working a lot, a lot of young people are overwhelmed in schools, okay? This is the type of shit that is in our shows. If you look at the CW where it's a little bit more toned down, right? But current scenes, current shows, none of the leads have actual chemistry. We have a whole generation of boys being preyed upon by people like Andrew Tate with his all of his bullshit. Obviously this is again a minority, a loud one, a loud one, but still a minority of people who are indoctrinating a lot of young people into thinking that this is sexuality, this is what sex is. With this representation in shows that are targeted towards girls. I think that they probably have a mostly female demographic watching them. There, it might be a little bit more equal, like 60-40, uh, but still the majority is probably women. And then they have people like Andrew Tate and other fuckers online on top of being the primary way they are exposed to sexuality. We have a generation that only has one type of sexuality pushed in front of them every day, day in and day out. Now look at this scene, right? So like recently I watched this scene, I saw it on Twitter, someone posted it and they were like, look at this, how much tension and how much sensuality is in one scene. Oh. I want you to quit this kill you. What happened? It's over. She was right. I am crazy. To fall for someone I hardly knew. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, uh, you still got that ring? Uh, I, I tried it on and it won't come off. And when was the last time you saw something like this that actually made you feel something? Because I watched this scene and I was like, oh wow, we did used to have, like it wasn't my age, because I thought that because I was young and I was like a teen, a young teen, that watching these movies or, or shows or whatever, that I was kind of more invested or, or I was romanticizing life a lot more because of my age. But in reality, I think that the reason why is that we do not have real chemistry, anything that is representation of dignified sex. And I don't mean sex within marriage. I don't mean not sleeping around. I don't mean any of that puritanical shit. I mean sex that involves respect, okay? Because the, the type of sex that we are exposed to day in and day out is this type of shit with tits swinging. The girl is lying to her friend, fucking somebody who's a literal abuser, who abuse her friend. How How is anyone supposed to have any interest in participating in something that is only presented to us in the most degrading ways? We have the same representation with Kat. The latest release with 
this new version of Euphoria, the idol, we get the same type of shit where the entirety of the show is going to be sexual, but it's not going to be interesting. It's not going to be sensual. It's not going to allow dignity to anyone who participate in sex. It presents it as something morally corrupt because there's no other way to engage in it but be degraded. This is, this is the type of thing that we constantly show. It doesn't mean that you cannot enjoy things the way that you want to enjoy them, but it's just really strange to only show this type of representation and nothing else. It's explicit, but it's as if two pieces of steak being slapped together. This is what it feels like to watch these sex scenes. That's why people, young people, who only ex who are only exposed to this type of sex scenes, this is why they say they don't want them. A lot of people, if you, if you follow people on Twitter who are like late teens, early 20s, and they're talking about film, they're into film, a lot of them say, no, we do want sex scenes but the reason why they even say that is because since they are interested in film they've watched a lot of films from different countries different points in time where there was different representation of sex and even when it was of um things that are of a violent nature there was some kind of fucking point to it you know there was something interesting being said even if it was hard to watch through the experience there was something on the other end where you would be discovering something about yourself or others while watching it with this type of shit it's just lazy it's lazy and it's as if you're just putting two packs of meat on top of each other and you're just smacking them the two together. This is what you're getting. It is void of any personality, charisma. We don't have actors that are the charismatic lead of a generation anymore. Of course, it's hard to manufacture them now because they are just, um, the media is not as well controlled as it used to be or corrupt as it used to be in terms of, you know, making a star. But that's the thing that even people who they choose to try and promote as the new star, people who they try to manufacture into something, they do not have the charisma. Levinson's work is like watching a meatpacking plant go through the day of work. You are are seeing a lot of shit that you probably don't really want to see because it's so explicit and gruesome but at the end of the day it is just operational stuff it's not something that actually is going to make you confront your own fucking existence if you don't make me feel for this type of character i don't care you are not telling human stories you're telling privileged nonsense you're telling stories of people who are bored and we are bored of them we are tired of watching you jack yourself off day in and day out i'm sure that if we actually made an effort to make entertainment which this is just entertainment this is not art right if we made an effort to make entertainment that would have more representation of sex that was allowing for some kind of respect to be there i think that we would have a little bit of a different conversation with the young people instead of um this nonsense because they are exposed to not something that is so crazy and like the opposite of vanilla sex they're exposed to something that's just disrespectful that's it and if it's not disrespectful it becomes operational it becomes a to-do list a list of things that you're supposed to do before you can do something it is a very surgical approach to it which is also doesn't really appeal to many people or to anyone really so you have to understand that if we don't get rid of these fuckers who constantly spend millions of dollars to create shows that degrade every woman imaginable in the entirety of the show whenever she is participating in sex and replace it with well-developed stories and even if light-hearted or not light-hearted but not very deep per se movies like for example my best friend's wedding if we don't replace it with better representation of sex that makes it look like it could be fun and respectful instead of a shit show of you just allowing bullshit we're not gonna see a well-adjusted generation because this is what they see most especially since many of them their formative years of teenagehood were spent in a pandemic with an economic decline as the backdrop of it all you have to understand that this does not look appealing and it shouldn't 
look appealing. The problem is not the fact that these sex scenes exist, it's the fact that these kids don't even know that it's supposed to be fun and cute. The last point here, this generation doesn't know dates, okay? The dating I see around me of my peers and people younger than me, they're all deprived of respect, fun, and levity. We made it boring, we made it a chore, we made it miserable really. I think that it is appropriate to remember this article that came out a while ago, an article made by R.S. Benedict, everyone is beautiful and no one is horny. Talking about how we have a lot of superhero movies, a lot of movies technically being everything that is considered to be beautiful. However, the entirety of the movie is basically you being horny for war. Captain America here, you know? One of the lines here, in the very beginning too, is on the surface, it is idyllic. Racial harmony, gender equality, unity behind a common goal, and firm, perky asses and tits. And then the characters speak. The topic of conversation? Military service, of course. One joined for the sake of her political career, another joined for the hopes of receiving her breeding license, another talks about how badly he wants to kill the enemy. No one looks at each other, no one flirts. A room full of beautiful, bare bodies and everyone is only horny for war and this is the type of thing that we have created that maybe people are not particularly horny for war but the the way that we present media nowadays the, the type of media that we feed the new generation is mostly people horny for violence the final thing i want to say i'm gonna read this because i wrote it down and i don't think I can phrase it better than this. Sam Levinson taking over a show that originally was about a woman who was finding herself sexually and changing it entirely to tell a male fantasy steeped in while framing it as something she enjoys is accidentally a perfect real-life depiction of the sexual liberation movement being co-opted by daddy issues girl looking men who love to see women raised in this illusion of freedom from puritanic oppression while they convince us that this is what sexual liberation truly is abuse but the type that you enjoy let me know what you think about that quote it's not a quote i just said it i just wrote it down before i said it <laughs> Let me know what you think. I am uh, going back into my hole to work on the Bratz video and um, I'll be back soon with something else. Bye.